Good morning, YouTube. Welcome in. Today, we got a beautiful build for you. Today, we're building what's called the AMF1. Uh, absolutely killer system. We want that sleek, stylish, kind of race car vibes. And we're doing it all in the brand new F1 case coming over from Antec. We have a 7900X3D pairing with the 7900XT. It's coming over from F, uh, F, XFX. XFX 7900XT. Yeah, it's a lot to talk about. Beautiful system amazing performance in terms of 1440p even into 4k gaming it's super sleek we got the dark rock pro 4 cooler cooling the system it's going on the b650 tomahawk board from msi which is nice and sleek we got g skills rip jaws s5 ram which is all black and slicked out as well one terabyte nvme drive coming over from kingston in the kc3000 again it's going all in the beautiful antec f1 full tower which looks absolutely slick i think you guys are gonna love the front front grill on this case i think it looks fantastic let us know what you think down below in the comments make sure to that like button help us with the algorithm over here on youtube make sure to that subscribe button as well if you want to see more beautiful pc builds that we put over here on our youtube channel you want to catch us live on edited raw like it is right now when i butcher these intros you can join us any monday wednesday or friday over at twitch channel at twitch.tv slash stints at 10 a.m eastern we hope to see you soon uh shriz will be here too so shriz will be on the mic if you guys have questions about performance specs things like that you can answer he'll be at the desk oh my god that's loud uh answering in those questions Anything Unfortunately, you hear me? Wow. Anything wow. optimization and uh, FPS, FPS, computer yeah. parts and all that. All right. I'm going to go top down really quick, guys. So you can see the motherboard. Again, we use this board a lot, but it's just, it's so good for the price. Again, it's the uh, B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi coming from MSI. No frills, just good quality, good reliability. MSI is named a legendary Tomahawk boards. I mean, across all the different SKU or all the different chipsets, the Tomahawk's been one of the most reliable boards MSI's ever put out. Not gorgeous looking, it's sleek, it's sharp, it's functional, and it's uh, reliable for the most part. So um, we've never really had any serious issues with them other than like first generation launch, there's like of the, the, of the board, like it's a brand new chipset. Yeah, there's gonna be some updates and dry, or some BIOS, things like that, but man, they've been, they've been really good, so. Yeah, all they needed actually was just a few BIOS updates and now they're actually really rock solid. They're yeah. one of the better ones. Yep. The only, slight downside, I wouldn't really call it a downside, is it takes a little bit longer to boot mm -hmm. compared to other motherboard. Yep. All right, so let's start it right away. First off, we're gonna get our CPU down the socket. We have the 7800X3D. Again, it's one of the best CPUs you're gonna be able to purchase right now. Uh, price performance, it's just so, so good. Socket's looking good, no bend pins, as we would come to expect from a brand new motherboard. Let's drop this 7800X3D down and in. Latch it down, there it is. All right, RAM, got a RAM off the side. Again, we have the 6000 C30 kit today from G-Skill. Um, before we get this started, we're gonna put our NVMe drive in, and then we're gonna work on our cooler standoffs. Again, we have the Dark Rock Pro 4. A little bit of overkill, honestly, but the price of this cooler right now is fantastic. Performance is great, whisper quiet. I think it's still something, something people are gonna really like about today's build. It's super quiet, really sleek, and a really good price performance. I mean, we're talking about right on two grand. And I mean, if you're playing games, Tarkov, Warzone, and you're not really doing a lot of streaming, Outside of maybe like even, I mean, even the streaming's okay. For the longest time, AMD hasn't had the strongest encoding on their GPUs for like Twitch and stuff like that. But, oh, that's on the mic, that's Trizzle. Here, I think I have, a, I think I have desk cams. There we go, desk cam. Say hi to Shriz, Shriz should pop up there. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm the one of the optimizers for stints and uh, like I help out with different uh, stuff. I see Shriz in Discord often quite a bit. So you guys want to know who that is, you got a face, face to a name now. <laughs> yeah, a nice little sleet shirt. Yeah, I got the Sinsville jersey on. We're gonna get more of those. Obviously, for the that's a team shirt, so we gotta get Triz one. Triz is wearing mine. Yeah. So I was like, hey, I got one of these today. You wanna rock that? He's like, heck yeah. So <laughs> I forgot how good this cooler is. I haven't built this cooler in a while because it used to be like a $150 cooler. Now they're like $80. All right, we'll take off our factory standoffs really quick. I'm gonna go back to the overhead so you guys can see. Our factory retention clips here. We're going to the cooler. All right, these are in. The brackets are in place. Looking good there. Just want to make sure they're nice and tight. They're over torque, but I want to make sure they're tight. It's a very big cooler. Over here again, it's like a $2,100 system, by the way, chat. So for $2,100, we're talking some serious performance. Here, right, guys, G-Skill S5. Again, today is 6,000 C30, which is the sweet spot for AMD. Some CPUs can do 64 C32. Uh, we just like the 6,000 C30 kit. It just, it just, it just runs right out of the box. You can't go wrong with that for AMD. Yep. And then for Intel, the, the easy sweet spot is 6400 and 6800 for a few of them as well. 700 X3D down the B650 Tomahawk. Again, we have our standoffs again for the Dark Rock Pro 4 coming in from Be Quiet. A one terabyte KC3000 drive down in the socket. We have our 32 gigs of 6000 CL30 RAM coming from G-Skill, which is perfect for the AM5 like we just talked about. Absolute killer. Now, let's get this case out. I think people are gonna freak out about this case. I don't. We haven't shown it on the channel yet. 
It's a new case that came out like a month or two ago. I haven't built in it because it is more of a full tower case. It's a little bit bigger, definitely a little heavier. I was surprised when I picked it up. I was like, oh my. Um, you know, we always try to build something new here on, on uh, Twitch so you guys can see the new stuff. Look at the, look at the accessories they give us too. Here's the accessories chat. So you got your, your Anjack box, you've got your manual, you've got extra fan adapters, zip ties, your screws. Pretty nice little accessory box from the Performance F1. That's why I call it the AMF1 system. Yeah, front's pretty slick. Has a slick looking case. Going for that almost F1 kind of style. It's got that nice flats in the front. Reminds me a little bit more of the, of the, uh, the Torrent style design. Definitely really premium. On the back side too, that's why it's heavy. Sure is. Oh. Oh. It's a glass back. 360 top mount, and that's why it's heavy. If this had a regular aluminum back panel, it would probably be about 10 pounds lighter, it feels like. Probably, but uh, yeah. let's get it opened up. I'm impressed. The cable managers on the back here is pretty slick, though. Behind that is plenty of room to hide your cables with their built-in panels. It's actually really nice. That's really slick, really clean, very streamlined. Uh, I mean, this is this is only like, I think it's got a $150 case, so it's pretty good. I mean, oh, it's not only is it Screwed in, it's, reten it's retention. Wow. That's pretty nice to have the dual, like that way when you're taking the case off, it's not falling. Three 140 fans, fa a factory stock in the front trays, which is really nice. This is also gonna help rigidity for that front panel. This is this isn't aluminum, this is actually plastic, but it is just, it just, um, but it, yeah. and it, it's like a painted. And but the it, outside is? The outside is actually plastic. Yeah. Uh, it's got glass up top. Oh, I forgot, this has an LED up top. It has a, a little readout, it has an LCD readout up top here. That's really nice. I don't know if you can see it, chat, but I'll show you right here. On the top panel, give you a top panel view. Um, you can see here it's got the loadout, or your kind of like your loadout, not your loadout, but it's gonna have, I think, your temps. It has a panel right here, which is all still up. We have the protective wrap on. We have USB and Type C. You can see here it has even has the little uh, rubber protectors. The really different different things here. We have a microphone, we have a restart, and we even have a temp. So you're, there's a temp loadout right here, which we have that. It's pretty nice, pretty slick. The rear fan is, I believe this is a 120. Uh, it is a PWM fan, which is nice to see. Uh, I don't like where the way they put it in because like the cable's down here when you got to go up and around. But we should be able to clear all that, get it up and over. The front has three 140s factory, which is nice to see. A lot of airflow in this case. Definitely airflow focused, performance clean. I think they even have an RGB version of this case, if I'm not mistaken. They do have an RGB version, but this is uh, overall very premium. I wish uh, this would be a very good. Um, it was like business class, like a, like if you're doing like an editor or a, uh, editor, yeah, you're doing rendering, things like that. You want a clean looking case, but you don't want to go like, you know, $300 for like a pro art case or Same. a higher end, be quiet. You know I mean? This would be a really good uh, good, uh, or a good option for you. Rubber rubber grommet pass-throughs, which I love to see on cases, that, cases that aren't doing it in the $100 price point, get on it. People don't realize that the rubber pass-throughs is literally like cents, cents on the dollar. And when you don't do it, it's making it look cheap. So I like that Antec does it almost standard on all of their cases, like $80 and above. Look at the above. Look how much room you'd have the top trays. You can almost do push-pull if you really wanted to on a top mount. Um, there's a lot of a lot of space up here for a top mount cooler. You've got, man, like four to four to, I mean like three to four inches up top there. So you definitely do like slim fans and a uh, and regular fans on it if you want to do like a push-pull configuration, which is yeah. really cool. It's pretty clean. I like this case so far. All right, let's go top down. Get this board in. It's gonna be a really good looking board to go in this case too. Look at, all, look at all the room down here. You can put fans in the bottom too, Shriz. It looks like one, two, you can put three 120s down here on the bottom if you guys wanted to do uh, um, fans on top of the power supply basement. Board's all in. Look at all the room in there. This is also extended, extended you can do extended ATX in this. Let's get our screws down and in. Board looks good in there. That board looks really good in there. It does. Let's get some of our front panel cables connected first. So we've got a Type-C. We have a USB connectivity for that, um, that, that screen which I see here, come from the top panel. Let's get our Type-C in, our USB Type-C going in. Next will be our USB 3.0. Get this USB 3, it's gonna go right here. I love that the, this is a, the, the bigger case. A lot of cases right now we're building with this board, when they move the 3.0 headers down to the bottom right here, it's really tight and it can put a lot of pressure on that, con that connector and on the solder points of that connectivity to the motherboard and the PCB. This case actually having that is really nice to see. That's a, that's a win. Cable management so far is pretty clean. Let me get the power supply out, you see what I mean there? It's super clean. Um, we'll see how it is once again, once again, once we get the power supply in. Let's put this back around, start working on the power supply chat. Power supply out, PQ850M, plenty of power for the system. Again, the 7800 XRD, people think it's like a huge like power drawing CPU. And mostly in gaming, it's pulling 65 watts, peaking like 70 to 80. It's not a very uh, hefty CPU in terms of power consumption. Really, this system is gonna be really efficient. Um, so an 850 Gold, um, especially one that is used that's I believe it's a Seasonic OEM through Deepcool is even better. So there's that beautiful power supply. 
Let's get our cables we need today. No SATA today, which is nice. Pretty much just need uh, our PCIe, our CPU, and our 24 pin main. Tester, cables, things like that. Go in the motherboard box. All right, here we go chat. Slide this power supply in, 850 PQM from Deepcool. Fantastic power supply. All right, let's go up and in with our front panel connection. Get that in. There we go, looking good. Our front panel, we have USB, and then we have our HD audio. Right, here's our USB. This is gonna be for their front panel little controller they have, the Antec Utility Controller for the temps. And last one is gonna be our HD audio going up and in here. All right, we'll get this done. Once we get these cables managed, we're gonna move on to cooler. Got our cooler mounted. There's grommets underneath. I don't know if dad life's still here, but it creates a really clean bottom. Like that cable management looks super clean and tucked there. So I kind of like it, I kind of dig it. All right, we're gonna go top down, get this cooler mounted. All right, we're gonna go get our uh, thermal paste out. Be quiet. I don't know what Be Quiet uses. I think they have their own brand, but it's an X mark the spot because we don't have a, a grid. There we go. Still have enough for extra. If they need to re reapply, we'll put it in a motherboard box. I like to, always like doing that for, for coolers, especially if you're in an air cooler. It's nice to every, honestly, I say about every, every 12 months, reapply thermal paste. It does help a little bit. You'll see your, your temps over time and that, that paste kind of get kind of hot. It really also depends on the system you're on. I'm going to cut right down on the top of the, boom, there it is. All right, let's get our fan out here. We have our second fan. We're going to slide it down and in. The crazy part is you can actually, can we put it in from the top? We can almost put it in from the top. That's how much space is up there. All right. There it is. Our fan's in. All we need is a GPU. There we are. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, this, honestly, this cooler is kind of overkill for this one, but we just want something that's, you know, like, you can put it in here, you can do a lot on it. It's a slick car. Like, that looks... I think it kind of goes with the front, the front of the case. That's kind of why I picked this. It'll help accent the front a little bit, like that design. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about when I put this together. Like I think it's, it's kind of got that race car vibe, chat. What do you think? 20 gigs of VRAM under under $800. Really powerful card. Definitely will recommend probably getting a, a different bracket because the one they give you that goes on the back of the piece guy spot, I hate those brackets. You're still putting pressure on a spot that has less, more or less flex versus putting something that's right here. Like if you can get one that mounts here or just get one of those little Antec ones or yeah. Uh, Asia horse ones on Am on Amazon for like ten dollars. They're better in my opinion. Slide this beautiful 7900 XT in. There we yeah, go. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the new case from Antec. It's the Performance One FT. Yep, Alex Slick. Like that card goes with the case. Like the whole design. We're just putting little zip ties here on the PCIe connectors before we get to boot it up. We probably will obviously with this being a uh, semi actually we'll go Windows 11 on this one. Windows 11 is now going to be coming pretty much standard here at SenseBuilt because they're going to be phasing out Windows Windows 10 what this year or next year? This year, yeah, 2024. Well, they, I think I think in yeah they said well they said no I think it's October 2024 they're going to stop uh, updates for it. Yeah. So it's like, we might as well just make the switch to, to 11 for our customers, you know? We don't want them to go through that, you know? Like I said, cable management on this is a dream, too. Like, look how clean that is. It's super clean. And then put that back plate on it. Yeah, super clean cable management. Like, the fact that they zip tie it underneath right here just makes that back look super... Dude, this looks... Yeah. Super sleek. There's only, like, two cables, you see. It's the cooler cable and the power cables. Look at that. Is that clean or what? Are you guys ready to light it up? You're not gonna see a lot of RGB today, chat. You'll see pretty much just the XFX card and no, zero RGB. You're gonna see those beautiful fans flowing, all right? <laughs> That's what we'll see today. Guys, thanks for coming in and liking another video here on YouTube. Make sure to hit that like button to help us with the algorithm. Make sure people find us and see all the beautiful PCs we build. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button as well. Remember, we build these systems live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday over on our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash stints. Come over, hang out, chat it up with us, and watch us build beautiful PCs for everybody in the community. And remember, let's go.